Hello and welcome to C3DNA product presentation. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the C3DNA Cloud Equalizer product that allows us to create application area networks that can span across multiple cloud providers, multiple zones, multiple hypervisors, and multiple operating systems. As you can see in this picture, I have realized an application area network with access to resources from different cloud providers starting from Amazon in Seattle, our own private data center in Santa Clara, Cisco in Texas, CenturyLink New York, Google South Carolina, Microsoft Azure Iowa, NTT in Tokyo, Oracle in Colorado, and IBM SoftClear in Washington. I'm going to now do a live demo of an application area network that we have created using these clouds. So once I log into my UI, which is our single pane of glass, through our service control plane, you will see I have access to these different cloud providers. So this is Amazon where I have spun up a few guest VMs and these guest VMs in this case are running Ubuntu with a kernel version of 3.13.0.48 and as you can see the IP address of this VM is 52.26.252.94 the next VM is 52.88.45.101 so we can support multiple subnets, multiple tiers. This is Amazon Seattle. If I go right, this is our private data center in Santa Clara. This is CenturyLink New York. This is Google South Carolina. This is Microsoft Azure Iowa. This is NTT in Japan and then we have IBM SoftClayer in Washington. So what I have done is I have created a demo application, a three-tier application using Apache, Tomcat and MySQL and I'll show you how easy it is for me to manage the life cycle of this application across different clouds, different constructs without using proprietary cloud tools as well as without being limited to a cloud availability zone from a particular cloud provider. So once I make this application up and live uh, running, you will see I'm writing transactions, let's say every two seconds, and these transactions are being written to a database, and the database is 52884501, which is this database, 52884501. So once this application is running, what I can do is I can take one tier or one component of this application, or two, or all three of them, and migrate it or scale it to a cloud of my choice. So I am here in Amazon without using any of these Amazon tools just through the sheer power of cloud equalizer software I can pick up this database and let's say migrate it to another cloud I am going to pick uh, this cloud as entity in Japan so once I do that you will see that this tree will get lifted from here and will land in entity Japan momentarily there you go so if I stop my transactions, I'll show you that I wrote my transaction number 1987 in Amazon on an IP of 52884501 and I wrote my transaction number 1988 in NTT in Japan on 153.149.38.130 which is 153.149.38.130. <coughs> so you can see how easy it is for us to migrate the application running from in one cloud to another cloud and here the important thing is that I, am, I maintain reads and writes and I guarantee the sanctity of the application in the data. So though my Tomcat and my Apache stayed in Amazon and the application is live, my database moved to another cloud provider. I often get questions about latency and the data size and all. So whatever I have done is the power of our technology, but of course we cannot defy the laws of physics. So if you have huge data sets, you have to work on your RTO and RPO which is a recovery time objective and recovery point objective and once that is established then it will determine how long it is going to take for such migrations to occur. So what I did was through point and click but now I am going to show you the same thing how I can achieve through our policies. We have written a very robust policy engine and I am going to just do a quick demo of the policy engine. So I am going to define a policy over here called scale out demo let's say and I'm going to pick a parameter and the parameter let's say if I'm anticipating a lot of uh, traffic on my application which will lead to new enrollments or stuff being sold through my site and a lot of updates to my database so I'm going to just pick a parameter for my database and then I'm going to pick an operator and then I'm going to stick a value so let's say I put a value of 2000 now this value could be a million two million and I could have written this policy in the past sometime so this is an offline activity so you will see I'm building a policy called total rows is greater than 2000. Then we have a few predefined managers. So I want to essentially invoke my performance manager and make sure that when this condition occurs, I migrate my service to a beefier uh, MySQL instance. 
So you see that I added a behavior. The behavior is very simple. Sounds like plain English. Dollar database, dollar application ID, row count is greater than 2000. Raise an alarm, send it to the DBA and do a surface migration. So now I've stored that into my policy engine and this is just defining the event. The second step that I have to do is for this, when this qualifying event happens, what is the action that I have to take? And so in this case, I wrote a, a policy called scale out demo. So I'm going to just say when this condition occurs, migrate it to let's say IBM soft layer because that is where I have a bare metal machine with a lot of horsepower. So I'm going to just do that and the system will just store that and once that qualifying event occurs, you will see that my database will act accordingly and according to the policy that's defined. So let's go back to this view. You will see I'm not running in IBM soft layer yet and my transaction count is 1991. It's business as usual. Uh, very soon, uh, once my transactions get start getting right written, at the, some point this will become 2000, uh, perhaps in another nine seconds. And you will see that my system will automatically migrate it from NTT in Japan to a bare metal in IBM soft layer. So as you can see, the transaction count is incrementing. Again, one thing I want to mention here is it won't happen at sharp 2000 because I want to make sure that no data is lost in the process. I'm going to perhaps write a few transactions in both locations synchronously. And then when I'm happy that the transactions and the databases are in sync, I'm going to do a cutover. So you can see here, I wrote my transaction number 2005 or 2003, sorry, in <coughs> in a database in NTT Japan and I wrote my transaction number 2004 in a database in IBM software. So I showed you how easy it was for me to live migrate an application from Amazon to NTT in Japan and from NTT in Japan to a bare metal in IBM software using our policy engine. I want to take it one step further and just show you the power of our technology again, the cloud equalizer. And this is not merely about the database. And it also, as I said in the beginning, we do not use any of the cloud proprietary tools. We do not use stuff like live migration or virtual machine motion, vMotion, nor do we use the P2P, the physical to physical or physical to virtual or virtual to virtual or conversions from VMDK to OVF and exports and imports because we have taken a top down approach and we only operate at the application level. We are able to manage the application lifecycle by decoupling it from the underlying infrastructure and without real, really relying on the relying on the tools as provided by the different cloud providers. So now I'm going to show you this is an OpenStack cloud in NTT and this is Microsoft Azure and uh, we know that Microsoft Azure uses sort of an Hyper-V implementation for the hypervisor. So I have got a content management website over here, a WordPress blog and you can see this blog is active over here and I can write a few posts if I want. So I'm going to just perhaps create an add new post and I'll just say demo and I'm going to just publish this. So you will see that this is a live application hosted by this and I just wrote a post called a demo <coughs> and this post is here demo. So while this is live and let's say people are blogging constantly, I can just pick this application running in Microsoft Azure and I can migrate it to another cloud. And I'm going to just see again, it's live migration and I'm going to migrate it to NTT, let's say NTT again, and let's pick NTT app one. I hit confirm and you will see that this whole application, though it is made up of a web server a Apache and a MySQL instance, it will get migrated from Microsoft Azure and it will go to NTT. And while this condition is occurring, people can continue to blog and do whatever they want on this website and the application will always be live, you know, and this does not involve any virtual machine migration or motion. And I'm just doing it at the application level where I'm going to move the Apache and the MySQL and make sure that the two are able to communicate with each other uh, th throughout in the process continuously. So here you can see that I was able to migrate my Apache first because it was lightweight and I'm going to just migrate the MySQL also, but all this is happening in the background. There you go. So the application can completely migrated from Microsoft Azure to NTT Cloud. And I can go here and I can look at what my demo was. 
and you will see that the application is live over here and i can just add more posts or i can do whatever i want but this time everything is being run